So biventricular pacemakers are special pacemakers that have one more lead than a conventional pacemaker. So a normal standard pacemaker has two leads, one in the top chamber and one in the bottom chamber of the heart. As the name suggests, biventricular pacemakers have an additional lead in the bottom of the chamber of the heart, so there are three leads in total. And it allows the pacemaker to do specific things like making sure the two bottom pumping chambers contract at the same time in a more synchronous manner so it allows the heart to function more effectively. So that really is what a biventricular pacemaker is. It has three leads rather than standard two leads. So biventricular pacemakers are currently mainly used for patients with heart failure, with weak heart muscle. And in addition to that, they have what we call desynchronous uh, heart function. So the two chambers on the left and right side are not pumping at the same time. So we know in patients with heart failure and that problem with the synchronous contraction, if you have a pacemaker that stimulates the heart muscle to make them contract on both sides at the same time, that can make the heart a lot more effective, can reduce symptoms, and maybe even make patients live longer. Biventricular pacemakers are a very effective treatment for some patients with heart failure, but not all. So in order to benefit from a biventricular pacemaker, a patient needs to have heart failure, but they also need to have a problem where the heart muscle isn't contracting synchronously on both sides of the heart. So if the patient has both of those things, then having a biventricular pacemaker can help them. But a patient just has heart failure, but they don't have the desynchronous contraction, then this won't benefit them. After a pacemaker procedure, and this is the same for a standard pacemaker or a biventricular pacemaker, we normally ask people to restrict the activity for between four and six weeks. The pacemaker involves putting a little device just in the shoulder with three leads in the heart. And the first thing to say is because we've cut into the, the skin, there's a wound that needs to heal. So you have to look after the wound and keep it dry for the first couple of days and really look after the wound. We also then say for the first four to six weeks, to avoid any strenuous activity or lifting using the arm where the pacemaker is put in. So if it's put on the left side and it generally is done, we normally say not to do any heavy lifting with the left arm and not to lift the arm past 90 degrees. So things like swimming, playing tennis, golf, all of those things we would say take at least six weeks out before you go back to doing that. But having taken that initial time out, a patient with a biventricular pacemaker is allowed to go back to doing all the regular activities after the first few weeks. The procedure to put in a biventricular pacemaker is generally a low risk procedure, but it does come with infrequent uh, risks. The most common risk is bleeding, bruising or infection. Whenever we have to cut the skin to put the pacemaker in, it comes with a one to 2% chance of that happening. There is a 1% chance of damage to the lung, which is very close to where we have to stick the needles in to put the pacemaker. And any other serious complications are 0.2%. So one in 500 chance of any other serious unexpected problem. <clears throat> 